What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and adding three-dimensional elements to your websites and your applications can really take it from a zero to a hero. It just adds that dose of energy and excitement that really makes people wanna come back to your website. So in today's video, I'm gonna introduce you to Spline, which is a brand new 3D tool that allows you to design custom 3D elements and embed them into any website or application by literally just copying and pasting. It's absolutely amazing. And I'm gonna take you through how to use it and how to implement it right now. All right, let's jump right in. I have my browser open and you can find out more about Spline at spline.design. You can download it. It's available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. Uh, and this program you have to download and is free for now. I'm sure you'll have to pay for it later, but it gives you some info on what you can do with Spline. We have some primitives, some shapes here. It's showing you, hey, look, check this out. You can roll over stuff. You can rotate it and all of it is happening in 3D. There's lots of cool things on the website. I'll leave that for you to explore. But for now, I'm gonna open up Spline because I already have it downloaded. This is our launch screen. And here on the launch screen, you can see that we have my files. We have a library full of files that we can actually open and play with, which we might do later. Some things you might need to know, updates and your account settings. Um, I have a file open, it's called demo. There's literally nothing on the screen. I have my background as this dark shade of black and uh, we're ready to go. That's it, that's literally it. Uh, we can create a new object. When you press plus, we can roll down and see all the different objects that we can create. You can also create a flat rectangle, a ellipse. You can put text on the screen. You can also do the most common primitives like a cube and a sphere. And then you can also go back to your movement tool. They call it the translate tool. You have the scale tool and the rotation tool. And then we can play our demo and see how it looks. So that's kind of, those are the controls up at the top. On the left-hand side, you'll see once I press uh, ellipse, I'm gonna hold down shift, so when I drag an ellipse out, uh, it is proportional. You can see that it drops an ellipse onto my layers panel. We have a layers panel, and you can group things together just like you can in any other design software, and our right-hand panel is contextual depending on whether or not we have something selected. So when it's just the background, I can add fog, I can do the publish settings, I can change the lighting in my environment, but when I select an object, boy, I get a whole slew of other things that we're gonna talk about right now. Let's put some cool stuff on the screen, something a little bit cooler than that cube. I'm gonna draw, or excuse me, that sphere. I'm gonna draw a cube, and I'm actually going to, uh, let's see, I'm going to rotate it, and I'm doing that by holding down the Command or the Alt key, and actually kind of rotating it around. So you can see we have our cube there, that's pretty cool. You can also grab each of the little handles and move it around in three-dimensional space. I know it doesn't really make sense, because it just seems like we're moving it around like one thing around but let's drop another thing onto the screen and we'll see a little bit more of the three dimensionality let's bring a lathe in I'm gonna draw a lathe like this now the lathe is really interesting because you can actually come over here to the curve and change the size of the lathe it's as if you put a piece of wood onto an actual lathe and then you are shaping it like that, so that's pretty cool. We can change the size of this, um, so let's just, boop, I'm gonna rotate around. Look, check it out. We've lathed this thing up. I can grab any of these things and kind of stretch it out. Let's grab our lathe and make sure we lock the proportions of our scale and we will scale it up just like that, okay? So now you'll see as I move around, I'm holding space and moving things around. Now I'm holding down Alt or Control and I am manipulating items. So now it makes sense why if I move something back like that, they might look like they're right next to each other, but they're actually not. They're distanced apart, aren't they? So now all of a sudden our little handles make a lot more sense. We can actually also move items into other items and combine them. They'll kind of smush together like that. So now we have this linked item. So that's pretty cool. Let's get rid of these and put some other objects on our screen. Let's do something like a torus. I'm gonna draw this out. That's kind of like a donut, one might say. Let's rotate our donut around. Now each of the different defined shapes have different ways that you can control them. For instance, our torus has the ability to slice away some of it. Um, and we can do all sorts of different modifications um, depending on the type of shape that we are currently messing with. So we can also 
expand this shape and mess with all the different constraints of it, which is pretty cool. This might take a little bit of getting used to if you've never played with three-dimensional objects or played with 3D design tools. So um, definitely something to explore. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this icosahedron. Wow, I can't even say that word. And why don't we play with this one a little bit more? I'm gonna change the color of this. I'm gonna give it like a really cool color like this purple, and I can actually change the lighting. Right now the lighting is black, and we can change the shininess of this object. Um, we can also, let's see, what else can we do? Change the detail of it, okay. So that's kind of interesting. Um, we can also decide whether or not we want to show the wireframe of it. Do we want it to be flat or do we want it to be actual three-dimensional? And we can change all sorts of different things, but I actually kind of like what's going on there. That's really cool. I'm gonna do a cloner, which is just to duplicate this. And that allows us to kind of create things. Ooh, look at that. So we, we just cloned a bunch of them and we can move it around. So now we have our cloner, it's radial. We could linear, do a linear clone or radial clone like that and we can increase the count to it. That's pretty cool. And change the radius, like how tight it is. And now look at this. We have our own little shape that's all built off of that one shape. What's really cool about that is we change one shape, it's gonna change all of the shapes as well. So that's pretty cool. Why don't we also bring some text out and we should be able to type, there we go. So let's just type something inside of our text box like uh, geometry, something like that, okay? So I'm gonna take my text and I'm going to make it pure white and I'm actually going to change the size of it, so let's increase the font size. Let's change it to something a little bit more interesting, like railway heavy. Let's keep, can we keep changing the size on this thing? I think we can, something like that. Okay, so check it out, that's also in 3D space, which is pretty cool, man. Okay, I'm gonna bring this up, or make sure that we're keeping things relatively close to each other like that. Now we should also be able to change a little bit of the letter spacing. Very cool. All right, so let's do something like a pyramid back here. And we're just going to, yeah, something like that. Let's rotate this thing, make it look kind of cool. And it's kind of poking into our, our design and that's okay, but Let's give that one a cool color as well. And I think I just wanna size this thing down. I don't want it to be punching into my actual letters there, but that looks pretty cool. I like that. Let's, let's raise it up. And you are kind of creating a scene inside of Spline, one that the exact way that we export it here is the way it's gonna be visible. So now that we're here, we can preview it, we can see our scene. It looks really cool. It's not doing a whole lot though, right? And so um, uh, one of the first things we wanna do is why don't we create some cool hover effects um, around this thing? So I'm actually gonna group, take everything, Command or Control G and group it together and just call this, I don't know, group, something like that, okay? Now before we go too far, I do wanna add some kind of interactivity to my design. So I'm gonna take this repeated or duplicated icosahedron and I'm gonna create a different state for it. We have a base state and we have state one. I'm going to rotate this around a couple of different ways. So now we have the base state and we have the new rotated state. And what I wanna do is I wanna add a new event also, which says on mouse down, I want it to go to state one. Um, and I want it to cycle. So once it gets there, it should come back. Yes, I want it to rewind. Um, and that's all I want it to do. I can change the easing, but we don't really want to do that. Let's try it on mouse down. I click on it and it swings forward and it swings back. Now we can do hover, mouse down, you can do key effects, all that kind of stuff. Let's do a hover over here. We have state one for our triangle. Let's do a new state uh, for our pyramid. I'm gonna stretch this thing up and I'm gonna rotate it around and I'm gonna move it to the left. Maybe I won't move it to the left. Uh, and then what we'll say is, We'll come over here and create an event and we'll say on hover, mouse hover, I wanna to go to state one. Now we should be able to click on this and make it move and we should be able to hover on that and watch it grow. When we take our mouse away, it 
goes back and plays the other way. Now that's pretty cool. All right, I really love my project and I really wanna get it on my site. And so what I'm gonna do is come down to publish and share with nothing selected. I wanna make sure I'm creating a public URL and I do have some options. I want people to be able to rotate this design. I want them to be able to, no, I don't want them to be able to pan and zoom. And it, on the free plan, you do have to show the logo. So that, that works for me. I'm gonna go ahead and press export and Spline is gonna do the magic for me, okay? So here they go, they've done the magic. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this iframe embed code that it's given to me. If I wanna just see it uh, in the browser, I can do that as well. Let's open it up, let's paste it in there, and you can see I get this really cool interactive thing that I can actually rotate around, and this is the exact thing that I want on my website. All right, now that I've tested it out in the browser, I'm gonna grab that iframe code, I'm gonna copy it, I'm gonna come over to a code pen that I have set up, and literally the only thing that's in here is a navigation inside of a div and a little bit of CSS that's styling it with some positioning. I'm just gonna paste in that iframe code that I got from Spline and Sure enough, our Webflow project updates and we have our interactive three-dimensional element with interactivity right there on our website. This is super cool, you gotta try it. That's Spline. Well, that's it, that's Spline. You can download it right now and start using it. It's a pretty awesome tool, but with great power comes great 3D responsibility. So be safe with those 3D designs. What type of 3D projects are you gonna make next? Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear about what you're working on. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. I do tons of videos about design and development just like this one. So stick around by hitting that subscribe button and that little bell notification icon so you know when another video like this one comes out. I hope you guys are having an amazing week. I hope you're designing amazing things. I hope you're making amazing things. And I hope you are not getting lost in the third dimension. See you in the next one.